It's the end of an era for Home Depot. When next month draws to a close, Carol Tomei, the depot's chief financial officer and executive vice president of corporate services, will retire from the company after 24 years, including 18 years as CFO. She's presided over a period of incredible value creation. I think she's among the best in the business, if not the best. Now, before she retires, we wanted to have one last conversation with her about her legacy and the state of Home Depot going forward. We spoke to Carol earlier today at a Home Depot here in New Jersey. Take a look. Carol, I've never asked any executive this. How is this company, Home Depot, going to live without you? Oh, Jim, it's so great to be here. You know, we are 40 years old as a company. I've been there for 24 of those years. It has been an incredible blessing. I am just so excited, not about where we've been, about where we're going. It's bittersweet for sure. Right. But the company is in great hands. In fact, Richard McPhail is going to succeed me as our CFO. He has worked for me for 13 of the 14 years that he's been at the Home Depot. He's going to do a bang up job for us. Okay, well, let's talk about the bang up job you did well, first. Thank you. People want to know uh, what does a CFO do and what did you do for Home Depot that was unique to, to Home Depot as a CFO? Well, I think the best CFOs are business people first and finance people second. So early days in my Home Depot career, I put on an apron and I worked in the stores. That was a very, finance person. Absolutely. Because I realized that I needed to speak the language of the Home Depot, not the language of finance, the language of Home Depot. And along the way, I learned a whole lot about the business. Everything starts with the customer. The answer to all of our strategic questions are actually found in the store. I think that made me a better finance person because when it comes to things like capital allocation, which is what CFOs should do, well, just look at this store. You can see it at work. If you look at the new signings package, that's part of a $5 billion investing plan that we have inside of our stores. That's improving the experience and, oh, by the way, lifting our sales. I hear you say this, and the first thing that comes to mind is, aren't you going to miss it too much? I mean, if you're talking yeah. signage, you love this culture. Yeah. How are you going to transition yeah. out? Well, you know, I've had more tears shed over the past several months than I thought were possible for a human being. And goodness gracious, no one has died. I love this company. I love the people of this company. But it's time for me to move and do something else. And the cool thing is, is that I'm long Home Depot, and my husband, Ramon, and I are creating a family foundation. You are. Tell us about it. So we're going to pay it forward in a main, meaningful way, we hope. And so we really care about ho how Home Depot performs because of that. And uh, that is also Home Depot's tra uh, tradition. I was curious to know, you talk about capital allocation. The company's deeply committed to veterans, complete, yes. uh, committed to learning and education because yes. of your boot camps. How do you allocate something towards something that uh, the classic Milton Friedman say would say, that's not within the confines of a corporation, that's not what a corporation should be wasting its money on? Well, one of our core values is to do the right thing. We've committed through our foundation $500 million for affordable living for our veterans. But it doesn't stop there. We are all about job creation. And so we've committed $50 million to create 20,000 trade jobs. That's how we can allocate capital to actually grow the business. Because if you don't have people who can do the work, your sales are capped. It's a pretty easy financial decision to make, actually. Well, OK, that's great, because I think a lot of CFOs do not view themselves as someone who should be anything other than a bit of a bean counter, which mm. you are anything but. Yeah. On conference calls where everybody knows you as the dean, uh, we always look to you to try to get a sense of the consumer, to try to get a sense of whether the invest the home owner is investing or is, is the person expensing. These are concepts that are core to you. You've created them. Tell us about them. Right. Well, what we know that if a homeowner believes that their home is an investment and not an expense, they spend more money in their home. We have seen home equity values more than double since 2011. And you can see that in our sales because people are coming in and doing major projects, be it redoing their kitchens or their bathrooms or building out their basements, creating she sheds or man caves. They feel like their home is an investment. Here's the other thing that's really interesting. As we talk to millennials, we were nervous about whether or not they wanted to own a home. Right. I remember during the period there was a period where you were worried about student debt. Exactly. Worried about household formation and whether millennials would ever leave the couch. Exactly. Well, we saw that the largest uh, cohort of first-time home buyers last year were those aged 33. 
So as they're starting to form their family unit, whatever that is, they're buying a home. But here's the other really cool thing. They've told us through our research, we want to work on our house because we think it's a good investment. So that's music to our ears. Now, some other things that you've had to do, and I know you were involved with them, is you realize not by thing, which is Amazon, but by project, your professionals, which you own that market now, professionals wanted e-commerce. How did this come about? Because it was not necessarily beginning initially in your culture. Yeah. Well, one of our core values is entrepreneurial spirit. And you might think, how can a company of your size be an entrepreneur? Well, we are constantly looking around corners, trying to anticipate customer needs, wants, and desires. And what we're finding is that our professional contact contractors are actually finding the mobile device to be very helpful to them. They can source inventory by store. They can order and have the order shipped to their job site. It actually is important to them. So one of our major investments is going into what we call the B2B experience, which is taking our existing website and creating an experience that personalizes to you whomever you are. So if you are an electrical pro, it will personalize to you. If you are a plumbing pro, it will personalize to you. So you see what you need for the job. Of course you can shop the entire site, but we're gonna make it easier for right. you to get what you need. And down the road, we don't have it yet, but down the road we will have personalized pricing on that experience. Now that is gonna be competitive secret sauce because nobody else will know what we're doing, but that customer and our team. If I were the Fed, I would want to know what you're doing. You've got a handle on so many things. How often does the Fed check in with you? Well, it's interesting. The Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank does a really nice job of reaching out to the 6th District to talk to companies and organizations about what they are seeing in their business. It's a regional economic initiative they have underway. So I talk to the Atlanta Fed quite often. All right, that's good. I feel better about that. I want to, because I feel like that you have a unique view. I want to go back to some of these social issues. Yeah. Go back to the idea that was a couple of on your website, which can be so good. The notion of teaching people computers, digital. Yeah. That was just something you initiative you took upon yourself. You didn't go to Stanford and get yeah. comp sci. Yeah. I know you were involved in that. How did it happen and how's it working? So there's a war on talent in the United States. Ooh, I like that. And there's a war on IT talent for sure. So we went to our stores to say, okay, if you have a, a, a capacity for this, a desire to learn, we will teach you how to code. So we have brought these associates into our company and have taught them how to code, and now they're working in our IT organization. Couldn't be more proud of them. It's so exciting. Now we compliment those associates from kids that are graduate from Georgia Tech and other technology schools, but it's really cool to create careers at the Home Depot, and this is what we do at this company. We create careers. These aren't jobs, these are careers. Last question. What do you want your legacy to be, 18 years, senior CFO in this country, for Home Depot, but also for women, but also for America. I want my legacy to be the impact that I've had on people. Not just the people who are following me in finance, but the people of the company. When I started 24 years ago, I was all by myself. But if you look at our leadership team now, you see women in power. We have three executive vice presidents who are women today, and it's throughout the entire company. I am so incredibly proud of them and I hope they're proud of me. Well, Carol, thank you so much. You've been a great thank joy. You, Everybody follows you. Everyone wants to know what you're thinking, and you have taught so many people about business. Thank you so much. That's Carol Tomei. She is the Home Depot retiring CFO. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.